Imagine playing Hollow Knight Silk Song or Elden Ring or your entire Steam library, not on a PC, not on a Steam Deck, but on your phone, even a lightweight tablet. And I'm not talking about cloud streaming with lag, I'm talking about running it natively right on the chip inside the device. If you are thinking, wait, Valve already did this with the Steam Link, you're missing the crucial difference. Steam Link is a streaming app, your game is running on a powerful PC at home, and the video is sent to your phone. If your Wi-Fi hiccups, your game freezes. Valve is working on something a little bit different, to allow the device itself, like a phone or headset, to execute the game's code directly like a tiny self-contained gaming PC. I'm sure by now you've already heard of Valve's new VR headset the Steam Frame. But if you wrote off the Steam Frame as just another VR headset that few people will wear, you are missing the bigger picture. The Steam Frame is a Trojan horse. Inside the device is a revolutionary stack of technology that Valve has been secretly funding for nearly a decade. It creates a bridge that allows full window PC games to run on ARM chips. The same chips inside your Samsung Galaxy, your Google Pixel, your iPhone, and the Nintendo Switch. Today, we are going to break down Vex and Lepton, the two secret weapons Valve is using to separate Steam from the PC forever. This is how Valve plans to put Steam on everything. To understand why this is such a massive breakthrough, we have to look at the problem Valve has been staring at for over 10 years. Computers speak a language called x86. That's what Intel and AMD chips speak, and it's what 99% of your Steam library is written in. Mobile devices, however, speak a completely different language called ARM. This is what Apple Silicon, Qualcomm, and MediaTek use. For a long time, these two worlds were separate. If a developer wanted their game on a phone or a console like the Switch, they had to port it. They had to rewrite the code. It is expensive, it creates bugs, and it also takes a lot of time. Pierre, an engineer at Valve and one of the architects behind the Steam Deck, explained in a recent interview with The Verge that Valve hates this. Their philosophy is that porting is a trap. He put it bluntly, we think that porting work is essentially wasted work when it comes to the value of the library. Valve doesn't want developers wasting time rewriting old games. They want developers making new games. So Valve decide to do the impossible, rewrite the entire operating system to understand the games so the developers don't have to do anything. This wasn't just some random sudden decision, this is a 10 year plan. Pierre revealed that Valve started funding this way back in 2016. In 2016-2017, we knew there was close to a decade of work needed before it would be robust enough. There's a lot of work that went into that. They understood that mobile chips were going to get faster. They saw what Apple did with the M1 chip, so they saw a future with ARM. And the first proof of this concept for Valve is the Steam Frame. According to the specs, the Steam Frame is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 that is a mobile chip. It's the same processor you can find in high-end Android phones, yet reports confirm it can run Hollow Knight and even Hades 2 smoothly. So how is a mobile chip running a Windows game? And well, it requires a stack of three specific technologies that Valve is creating, all working together. The first layer you likely already know is Proton. If you own a Steam Deck, you use this every day. Windows games utilize specific commands or APIs to talk to the computer. The problem is, Linux doesn't understand those commands. Proton sits in the middle and translates the Windows language into Linux language in real time. But Proton Proton only solves the software problem. It doesn't solve the hardware issue. Even with Proton, a Snapdragon chip can't read the game code because it's in the wrong instruction set. And this is where the new magic happens. Enter Fex Emu. You can think of Fex as Valve's answer to Apple's Rosetta 2. Fex is a dynamic binary translator. It takes the x86 instructions coming from the game and translates them on the fly into ARM64 instructions that the mobile chip can understand. Now historically, emulation is slow and comes with its own set of problems, but Fex 
is different. Effects lead developer Ryan Hudek, who Valve actually hired to work on this full time, built this specifically for high performance gaming. As Valve tasked him with the responsibility of designing and frameworking the project in a way that it can work long term, not only for their use cases, but also keeping it an open project that anyone can adapt for their own use cases. Here is the genius part Fex is lazy, but I mean that in a good way. Fex only emulates the CPU instructions, the game logic, the AI, or even the physics calculations. But modern games rely heavily on the GPU for graphics. When the game asks to draw a 3D model or render a texture using DirectX or Falcon, Fex doesn't touch it. It passes that request directly to the native hardware. Pierre from Valve explains why this is the key to performance. The performance hit of any emulation stops as soon as you cross that API boundary. It will immediately jump into ARM native code. This means the heavy lifting, like the graphics, runs at native speed, just like a native mobile game. There's also one more crucial detail about FEX that gamers need to know, and that's correctness. Many emulators use hacks or tools to make games run faster, which causes crashes or triggers anti-cheat, anti-tampering software. Pierre noted that FEX is designed for 100% correctness. This means it handles the tricky stuff like DRM and anti-tamper code accurately. This is vital if we ever want to play multiplayer games on these devices without getting banned or running into other issues. But Valve didn't just stop at Windows games. The Steam Frame is a VR headset, which means it is competing directly with the Meta Quest, and the Meta Quest runs on Android. Valve knows there are thousands of great VR games built for Android, so to solve this, they built another layer called Lepton. Lepton is to Android what Proton is to Windows. It is based on a technology called WayDroid. Essentially, it creates a container inside SteamOS that allows Android apps to run alongside Steam games. This is a strategic play. It means a developer who made a game for the Meta Quest can take those exact same files, upload it to Steam, and Lepton will make it run on the Steam frame. No porting or rewriting. Valve is aggressively removing every barrier that stops a game from running on their hardware. So we have the software, Proton, Lepton, Fex. We also have the hardware, like the Steam frame. But the big question is, what comes next? Everyone is wondering if Steam is making making their own phone. Simply, if this tech works on a Snapdragon chip in a headset, it will work on the Snapdragon chip in your pocket. There are already people who are able to use Fex and Valve's other tools to play mobile games on their phone, like a Samsung Galaxy S25 to play Hollow Knight Silk Song. This proves that the technology is already stable enough for an enthusiast outside of Valve's own team. When asked if Valve is building a Steam phone, Pierre played it cool. He said there is no specific plan right now, but he didn't shut down the idea completely. I think that it paves the way for a bunch of different, maybe ultra portables. Handhelds, there's a lot of potential for ARM, of course. When asked if ARM is the future of handheld gaming, Pierre said, we don't really try to steer the market one direction or another, we just want to make sure that good options are always supported. So if this is what people want down the line, they already are making the tech for it to work. So here's my take. Valve might not make their own phone, as they don't really even have to. Because Fex and Proton are open source, Valve has given the blueprint to the world. Samsung, Asus, Lenovo, or anyone else can now build an ARM-based gaming handheld, or a tablet, or a laptop, and if they use this stack, Steam works instantly. So what does this mean for you as a gamer? It means the era of the mobile port is dying. Right now, if you want to play a game on your phone, you usually have to buy a worse, stripped-down mobile version that's filled with microtransactions, or you can use a cloud gaming service that usually ruins the performance completely. Valve is trying to kill that model. They want a future where you buy a game on Steam once, and it runs on your PC, your Steam Deck, your VR headset, and yes, eventually your tablet or phone. Valve is positioning themselves perfectly. This means for the typical mobile user, nothing really changes. But for the enthusiast mobile gamer, Fex opens up the possibility of running a specialized 
operating system on powerful mobile hardware to play your PC games. As for the timeline, the Steam Frame launches in 2026. Once that hardware is in the wild and FX is proven to work on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the floodgates open for other companies to use that same technology. Expect to see third-party manufacturers like Asus or Lenovo releasing ARM-based Steam laptops or Steam tablets in the next few years if it all goes well. They are betting that the future of gaming is all about your library existing everywhere you want to play games which shouldn't restrict you to just one device. So what do you think? Are you ready to uninstall your mobile games and just play your Steam library on your phone? If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to stay up to date on everything about Valve and Steam.